you've decided it's time for a new car. Not just any car though, because you can go get any car anywhere. Mm -mm. You've decided that you want your dream car. You know, the car that you have went on the manufacturer's website and custom built with your choice of interior, exterior color. You've added all of the extra packages. You want the car. This is your dream car. This is the car that you can't wait to drive. You can't wait to be seen in. This is the car that lives in your head, lives in your heart. You gotta have this car and not just any car. You want the car. After you have decided that the custom built car that you've made on the manufacturer's website, you want that. So you go to the dealership and find out that all of the custom options that you've added it's gonna take three months for this car to come. And because you are ordering a custom car, you're gonna to have to put down a certain percentage. You're gonna to have to make sure that your credit is good. You're gonna to have to make sure that you make adequate amount of money to approve for the finances. So you go and get the money. You go and fix your credit. You go and get the income. You do all this hard work to be approved for this car you go back to the dealership you put your money down and they tell you give us three months and we're gonna have your dream car delivered to your house red bow slapped on the hood you are so excited you go back and you wait patiently you order a custom car cover for your dream car even though it ain't here yet you know it's coming because you done done the work you've ordered the car the day finally comes and this car is delivered to your driveway and it is beautiful. You are in love with this car, baby. You cannot wait to drive this car. You take this car through the wash every other day to make sure it stays pristine. You only use premium gas. You make sure that you drive three car lengths away from the car in front of you so you don't have no wrecks you park in the parking lot all the way in the back so you don't get no door dings you are treating this car with care and then one day you start losing interest one day you don't use premium gas one day you skip the car wash one day you're in a rush so you park next to other cars and boom there's your door ding the first one you're mad but it's nothing you can really do it's there and because that's there you're like ah it ain't really that bad so you stop parking away from everybody else you start regularly parking next to all the other cars and the car gets dirty because you're not taking it through the wash as frequently you like that you are saving the money from using premium gas so you just permanently switch to regular gas then one day you decide yes yeah, time for my oil change and it's time for my maintenance but I'm too busy I'd rather spend that money elsewhere so you don't take it to the dealership to go get the oil change you just take it through one of the quick instant oil change places because you know just whatever's cheapest and whatever's easiest I don't care anymore because the new has worn off next thing you know the car is not exciting to look at anymore because it's dirty and it's covered in door dings and you done ran over a couple of curbs and the rims ain't shining no more. You notice a couple of bells and, and a couple of notifications on your dash where you need an oil change. Now the engine don't purr like it used to. Now the engine sounds like just your old car because you stopped taking care of it you're losing interest in this car you don't see the value in it anymore it's not as exciting as it used to be because it ain't going nowhere it's mine now and after a while you no longer get the oil change at all you no longer wash the car at all you stop parking it in the garage you stop using your car cover and one day you're driving this car and all your lights on your dash blink and the engine stops. So you have to pull over. This car has finally had its last ride 
because you have neglected it to the point to where it no longer runs. You wouldn't do that, would you? That doesn't make sense. You worked really hard to get this car. You did a lot of research to find this car. You waited three months for this car to be custom made with all of your specifications. You wouldn't do that, would you? It doesn't make sense. So why would you do all of the work to get into a relationship that you want, to get into a marriage that you want? Why would you spend all of this effort getting yourself together, you know, in the gym, learning how to cook, keeping your hair and nails together, making sure that you're out dating. You did all the research to find the car. You're doing all the research to find your husband, to find your wife, right? Why would you do all of that research? Why would you invest all of that time and money dating that woman, dating that man, sharing secrets, being transparent, building a relationship, letting each other meet y'all's kids and y'all's family? That's an investment, right? Same way you made an investment in the down payment of that car because you really wanted it, you invested in that relationship. Why would you spend all of the time and effort and money and energy and emotions in building a relationship to neglect it? Because what I find funny is the things that we deem valuable that's tangible, you know, the house, the car, the clothes, the shoes, the handbags, whatever, we will go above and beyond to make sure that that car is perfect, won't we? Especially the men folks. Ladies, you'll carry that purse and when you come home, you'll wipe that purse down, put it back in the dust bag, put it back in the box in the top of the closet, right? Because you love that purse. We do our shoes the same way. The type of investment and the type of work and effort that you put forth to get the materialistic things and then we go above and beyond to protect them and to keep it new. Why don't we do our relationships like that? Because y'all understand, even though that relationship is an intangible thing, it was important to you at one point in time. That man, that woman was important to you. You did a lot to get that man, to get that woman. You did a lot to build that relationship. In the same way I spoke about the analogy of the car, now that the new is worn off the car, now that it's not exciting, now that... You know it's not going nowhere because it's mine. I bought it. You start neglecting that car. That's what we do in our relationships. You think that person's not going anywhere because you've been neglectful and they haven't left yet and they still running. You keep neglecting them because they have accepted your disrespect once, twice, maybe three times. Now it's the normal because you have stopped putting in effort to spend time. You've stopped communicating effectively. You stopped considering them. And they didn't go anywhere. You thought everything was fine. Until one day, that car stopped running. Until one day, that relationship stopped working. And now you're all shunned. And now you're all stunned, shocked, and dismayed that she wants to leave you that he is ready to go. You shouldn't be, because the same way you wouldn't be surprised if your car stopped running after a year of no oil change, a, new, a year of bad gas, driving it 120 miles an hour every day, slamming on the brakes. The same way you wouldn't be surprised if your paint started chipping because you stopped washing it. You start just letting anybody hit and ding it and you wouldn't be surprised if your car stopped running because you are aware that you neglected the car. So why are we so surprised when the relationship stops running? Okay, I just want y'all to think about something. The same way we go above and beyond to protect the things that we have purchased because we can put a number on that car you can put a number on that house you can put a number on those bags and those shoes and you can calculate that car cost me 
$75,000. It took me three months to come up with the down payment. It took me working overtime for three months. It took me six months of working to protect my credit, to get my credit right. You get what I'm saying? You can look at that bag and say, that handbag cost me $5,000, $1,000, $200, whatever kind of handbags you buy. I only make $20 an hour. It took me 20 hours. It took me 100 hours to come up with this money for this handbag. I want to make sure that I treat this handbag with care because I worked too hard to get it. I worked too hard to purchase it. That's too much time and money that I've traded for this handbag, for this car, for this house in order for me to just neglect it and throw it in the corner like it doesn't matter, right? We spend the same amount of time, the same amount of effort. We spend the same amount of emotional investments, financial investments too, because let's be honest, we be paying for dates. We be paying for the cute dress, hair, and nails. We be paying for the gifts. We be paying for the haircuts. We be paying for the gas to go and visit, the plane tickets to go and visit. Y'all get what I'm saying? We need to realize that your relationship, your marriage needs the same amount of effort to keep it that you invested to get it. And let's not forget that the same way you was using premium gas in that car is the same way you got to continue to use premium effort in your relationship. The same way you respected the owner's manual that told you for best performance, you do your maintenance every three months, use this type of gas, make sure that you do ABC. That's the same way your relationship is going to require it. And if you don't respect what the owner manual says, if you don't respect the boundaries that your partner sets, if you don't show respect, no matter how mad you get, no matter how disappointed you are, if you don't continue to put in the same effort in loving, respecting, caring, cherishing that relationship and that person, your relationship is gonna stop running. And you will have no one to blame but yourself. Now understand, I know that it takes two to make a relationship work. And your partner needs to communicate with you that what you're doing is not working for me. You're hurting my feelings. You're disrespecting my boundaries. You are making me feel unsafe. That's very true. But the same way your car, Dash, will tell you, light, ding, check your engine light ding oil change light ding gas the same way you look at that car every day and it's looking all sad because it's dirty and covered in dents and dings and the paint is starting to chip because you're not taking care of it your partner shows you their check engine light their smile is gone they don't light up when you come into the room anymore they're not excited to call you about their day like they used to be they don't tell you about their problems anymore because it's just gonna turn into an argument. They don't wanna tell you what they need anymore because they've gotten so used to you rejecting their needs that they just said, don't worry about it, it's not worth the fight. The effort that they used to put in to make you happy, they stop. They're becoming withdrawn. All of that is nonverbal communication. They're telling you something's not right. Now in a perfect world, they just come out and tell you, hey, quit treating me like this. Quit talking to me like this. I need you to do this. In a perfect world, that would happen, but that don't always happen. We have to take the time to really get to know our partners. Same way you sat down and you read the owner's manual of that car, the same way you Googled how to make sure that you treat the leather on that bag, the same way you looked up shoe repair people so they can put the red back on the bottom of them red bottoms, the same way you figured out how to maintenance the thing that you purchased that was important to you, that's the same way you need to talk to your partner to figure out the maintenance to keep your relationship healthy. And if you don't, don't be surprised when you're broken down on the side of the road.